Uh, hello folks, uh, welcome to Mr. Munch's Doctor Who review. Uh, first off, like a little recap of last week. Um, didn't really get to, you know, do a review last week. Even though I kind of enjoyed Knock Knock, it really did, um, you know, hack them back to those, like, old, uh, hammer horror type of horror films. Um, I thought the enemies was a little bit stupid, you, you know, these, uh, I don't know, whatever they were, like space wood lice or <laughs> interdimensional wood lice, who knew what they really were. That, that was one of the main problems because we didn't really know what they were, neither did a doctor. But I did like some of the ideas he came up with, like dryads and stuff like that. I think that would have been like a better way of explaining it. Or maybe they were dryads, you know, you, you, you never know. Um, the beginning of Knock Knock was great, you know, I've, I've been in that situation with my ex, like, looking for houses to, you know, live in, <laughs> but then, again, it's the way the, you know, the guy shows up and says, oh, I've got a place for you, you know, and, you know, that's not, um, not suspecting anyway, is it? <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we we notice Belle knows, notices, like, right away that there's something wrong, but she's, like, trying to put it to the back of her head. And when the doctor's, like, trying to help as well, it, it's fun. But I know, like, she wants to keep, like, the doctor stuff and her personal life, you know, not, not kind of together kind of thing, but... I thought it was really out of Bill's character to be treating the Doctor the way she was. Especially since she's seen things now, you know? She can't, you know, she can't deny and she can't say when the Doctor doesn't, you know, no danger. So, you know, I, I, I find that just a little bit out of character with Bill. Um, yeah, the, uh, the whole thing, like, and the people getting, like, killed off one by one was pretty decent. But then, like most people, I I hated the ending. And to be honest, the guy who plays Pyro um, was brilliant all the way through. And then, uh, I know it was his mother and everything, but the way he, like, started crying and being, you know, oh, I don't want to go, you know, blah. That just really grained on my gears for some reason. I, I I did not enjoy that. It was... Uh, I mean, yeah, it, it, it proves my theory that it was another round of the bad guy is, is misunderstood again. Um, but we'll, we'll go over that again in, 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 you know, the next section. So, yeah, that, that was my you know, thoughts on, on Knock Knock. It, it was decent, and I loved all, like, the, like, hammer horror tropes and everything they put in with the lightning and all that. So, I think, for me, Knock Knock gets a, a six and a half out of ten. So, that's my notes on that done. My notes now on oxygen. Right, now this one. <laughs> wow. What an episode. Um, and it really wasn't scared to show you, like, right away as well, you know. It, it, it was like, this is danger, this is space. And then I liked the way it went to the doctor explaining it. Um, even though, I, I don't know, it's kind of like he has like a weird foreshadowing of everything that's like, going to happen lately. Um, yeah, uh, what, what, do I like, what do I like about this episode? Uh, Nadal, he's, like, quite serious. I mean, everybody been thinking he's going to be, like, some kind of weird, annoying, you know, comedy side, but he's not. He's not he, I am actually liking what I'm seeing of Nadal so far. But, like I said, it's quite serious, and I don't know whether anyone else picked up on it, but what was he on about with, like, a different face? You know? I, 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 this, there's a lot more to Nadal than, you know, what, what we're seeing at the moment. And it, it, you know, the series is like, I think is really shoving that in our face. 
I like the way the the doctor is bored, you know, um, so bored that he's breaking his own rules. You, you know, we we know the doctor. We know he's, you know, a silly man from outer space who just likes doing his own thing, but you know, saving lives as he does it. So staying on Earth. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe he's losing sight of his main objective a bit. And, you know, he, he's obviously as an adult to, like, remind him of this. And, he's, he's, you know, he's not doing a, a great job. Um, So w when they first, like, take off, you know, against an adult's protests, to see, like, a bit of future... Mainly because, like, the Doctor receives a distress call from the space station. Um... It's great weather there, and instantly, you know, there's there's no oxygen, and you can see that that's going to be a great problem to begin with. Um, I love the way that Bill is still even learning more when she talks about the artificial gravity, and she's jumping up and down a bit. Um, Pearl Mac is a brilliant character. I I really hope like she does stay on. Um, I I, so far as I know, it's still not totally confirmed yet that she's going. So. Hopefully we'll, we'll get a bit more of, of Bill. Or maybe even at some future point. You never know. Like some companions could come back. You never know. <laughs> um, yeah, the uh, the people in the spacesuits really remind me of like a space zombie kind of thing as well. Um, so yeah, they got this space station where apparently the workers are working for their own air. And you get paid in breaths. So... Um, the space station realizes that the TARDIS is creating oxygen and vents, seals the TARDIS off, vents all the oxygen, and then, well, vents the oxygen from the TARDIS, which causes the TARDIS to shut its doors so that, you know, it, it doesn't lose all its oxygen, I suppose. <laughs> Where um, it then starts to steal the oxygen that the TARDIS has put into the space station. Um, you know, that is explained quite nicely in the episode as well. Um, so, to save them from dying, they get inside the spacesuits. And then they realise that the spacesuits are actually the one, the things that are killing people. Uh, there was like some distress, uh, not distress, some signal sent to destroy the uh, organic component of the suits, which is the people, of course. Um... Yeah, so, as I was saying, compared to last week, uh, which was a spooky old story style, like Hammer Horror type thing, this was like, you know, new horror style, like in-your-face scares. Um, well, one thing I did pick up on as well is, like, how Nadal, uh Sorry about that noise, that's my tweets... <laughs> Um, is how Nardle has met this woman before. You know, I, I, he's been with the Doctor for quite a while now, so maybe they you know, this is those things where they've had adventures that you don't see. Um, it's quite nice, you know, to think that they do stuff like that. Also, I noticed, uh, again, that they were very Cybermen-like as well, weren't they? You know? Um, I don't know whether that that's going to, you know, that that foreshadowing or not, or it really has nothing to do with the Cybermen part. But you know that that's the way it is. So they meet up with some more survivors, obviously the ones who sent the distress signal, and they realise that it's the company that is, you know, the doing this, like, killing them. Luckily, they were off the grid when the signal was sent to kill the organic part. Um, and then they're in the airlock, and this is the most intense scene I've ever seen in Doctor Who. Belle's suit malfunctions and takes off her helmet as the, as the airlock is about to decompress. And, you know, she has to release all her breath. 
and it's it's just a very intense scene, and, and it all goes black for for her as she's you know dying of oxygen deprivation. But then we see she has a helmet on, is being led by the doctor, who very briefly we see doesn't have his helmet on. Um, Bill manages to come around like they move to a section of the ship which isn't mapped yet, so the space zombies can't get to them. But there's a problem. The Doctor has been blinded from his time without protection in space. And this is, again, a very intense thing for Doctor Who. (laughs) It's not nice to see the Doctor being all blind and a little bit helpless. You know, we're used to a very strong Doctor. Um... Even though, despite being blind, he still saves the day, he makes it so that it's more costly for the company to actually kill them rather than terminate them because he connects their life support to the base's uh, generator, which means if they die, the generator would explode and destroy the whole space station, causing the company, you know, millions of units or wherever they use as many wise in that future point so they actually manage to keep the people alive um of course we go back to the TARDIS then the doctor drops off the people but not before Nadal's like tried to cure his eyes and I say tried because this is a really big thing again we think his eyes have been cured and after he's dropped the people off and we're back in his office, Bill says to him, I'll see you again. And Nadal comes up and starts nattering at him, you know, telling him he's done wrong and like they should be there to protect the vault. And we find out the doctor is still blind. I mean, how much how much of a big thing is that going to be for the rest of the series now? We're not even like, ha- we're almost halfway through. But there's still another good just over half of the series to go where the Doctor's going to be blind and also I think this is coming up to like the three parter now as well we do see a brief glimpse of Missy so we're going to be seeing Missy so yeah that's been my review of Oxygen and Oxygen gets a nine and a half out of ten that's how much I thought of that episode. It was absolutely brilliant and intense in all the right scenes. Thank you for listening to this one. It's been me, Mr. Munch, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.